make sure that we are recording. We are recording. Okay, so I'm going to record the first part of this lecture. Um, for those who might have uh, internet, uh, internet connectivity issues, so that they can see this since we're going over the uh, some of the many projects today. Um, so uh, this week is week nine for our semester. Our test is scheduled for week 10, so our test is going to be, our test two is going to be next Thursday um, in class, and uh, next Tuesday will be our review. Um, so just uh, be aware of that. Um, we have covered all of the material in lecture, at least the majority of it, that is going to be on the exam. So, uh, so you are good in that regards. Uh, today, I wanted to go through some of the um, some of the mini projects that are uh, that you're going to be doing this weekend, and uh, then the rest of the time will be yours to work in a group, or for those of you who are working individually, to work individually on your project. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get started here. So first, let's let's head over to Web Campus. And uh, let me also bring up the chat in case there are any questions that show up there. Um, OK, there we go. Uh, so we'll go to our section is 1013 and need to move my windows around here, uh, my streaming windows. Go to the student view. Okay, so this morning I made available a couple of the mini project quizzes that we're going to be doing. So go to quizzes. You should see there are two new quizzes, uh, chapter three mini project and chapter four a mini project. So these are the these are two of the three mini projects that we're going to be working on this weekend. Um, the other one is going to be on web campus, and that's the one that I wanted to spend uh, most of the time on. So uh, that's going to be the majority of our of our time. It's going to be the one on web campus. But uh, if you go to quizzes, the the uh, mini project for chapter three and chapter four a are now available. Although I think that one is labeled incorrectly, that should be for A and B, but that's all right. Uh, so let's go into chapter three. And for chapter three, uh, you're going to be essentially looking at, um, at grades uh, for a hypothetical class in a university, as well as GPA for a hypothetical uh, student semester in a university. Um, so the first part here is uh, hypothetically you're gonna you're gonna think that you are the professor. You're given these are the uh, these are the grade uh, the uh, not the grade the uh, the grade parts um, with the students' grades. So the homework portion uh, they got a 95. The mini project portion they got a 92. Uh, product one they got an 86, and so on. And then the grade uh, portion weights, so the homework is worth 10%, mini project is worth 10%, project one is worth 10%, and so on. So this is kind of a, a great breakdown for a hypothetical class. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do is going to be looking at what is the, um, the points earned towards the, towards the class. So the way that you're thinking about this is um, uh, you can think of a class you get uh, from zero to 100%, you can think of that as points, zero to 100 points. And each category of the grade is going to give you a certain number of points. And what you do is you take uh, that percent of that score. So for homework, take for example, you take 10% of 95, uh, and remember to take a percent of a number, we take the decimal form times the numbers, so that's 0.1 times 95 which is shown here in the directions up here, um, and you get 9.5. So for the homework category, you can think of them as getting 9.5 points. And again, that's out of 100, where that will represent their percent. So you go through and you find the percent um, or the point value 
for each one of these categories. At the end, you add it together and that will give you the overall grade, which is again, going to be out of 100%. Um, if you wanted to take it a step further, you could say, all right, uh, what is the letter grade? Um, for our class, you can find that on page two of the syllabus. That's the breakdown of our letter grades, but uh, I don't believe I included that. No, that's not included. Um, so that is, that is this first question. The second question, you're going to assume that the student got a zero on the final just to see what they would end up with if they did not take the final exam. Uh, so it will be the same kind of breakdown as I believe the point values are the same. It does look like they are the same, yes. So uh, the same kind of grade as before, but hypothetically, what if the student did not choose to take the final exam? What would be their final grade? Um, and then for question three, you're looking at uh, taking, taking the result from question two. Um, uh, the percentage. That's a good question. Thank, thank you. Yeah, uh, you're, just, you're, just, you're just going to be writing the percentage. Um, I thought about including the letter grade as well as a, sec, as, a, the, as, a, as a second question at the end, but that is, we don't need to be that specific here. So just the percentage, just what, what, uh, whatever the point number you get from that. That's a good question. Um, so, uh, and, and if you do have any questions, again, you can Either let me know it through the audio, I'll be listening, or if you're not, if you don't want to do the audio, uh, just let it uh, drop, drop the question in chat. I'll, I'll keep an eye on that in case you do have any questions. Um, but that was that was a good question. Yeah. So you'll you'll just be doing the the grade per, uh, the percentage, not the letter grade, for this project, this mini project quiz. Um, all right. For three. You're going to take this this uh, student above, and you're going to say, "All right, well, this this was their, this is what their grade is without the final. That's what you get for your um, for your score, uh, the score here on two at the end." And you want to ask, "All right, what grade do they need to get to, for example, a seventy percent?" Uh, and what you're going to be doing then is you're going to be using uh, this equation and solving for the final exam uh, portion to get what their, uh, to get what, what grade they need to get on the final to get a 70% in this case. So questions one through three, you're looking at a hypothetical, uh, hypothetical student that is in a course uh, and finding out what their uh, final grade would be giving these conditions. For question four here, uh, for question four, let me see here, just checking on one thing. Uh, question four, you're going to be calculating the grade point average. Uh, and so for the grade point average, uh, it's going to walk you through how to, how to calculate this. You're going to be taking the point value of the letter grade for each course and adding it up and then you divide by the number of credits, I believe, to get the solution. Um, I might have to, I believe that that goes through all of it. So for question four, you're just looking for what is the grade point average, the GPA for, for the student for that semester. If they were taking these four these four courses with these letter grades and uh, these credit hours, uh, so that is where that comes from. And the grid points that comes from the letter grade. So A minus is always a three point seven, B is always a three, and so on. Okay. Uh, so any questions on this first quiz on on uh, the quiz for? Uh, chapter three mini project. Uh, that's a good question. How do credit hours affect? So at, at the very end, so the first thing you're going to do is going to calculate the points earned. That's, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe we should go through this. Let's, let's go through this. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the point value of the letter grade for each course. Um, by the credit hours of that course. 
so what you're going to do first is you're going to take 3.7, multiply that by 3. And you should get the 11.1. And you can verify that on your calculator. And then you do the 3 times the 3, you get 9. Uh, then you're going to add all of those up and you're going to get the sum that's going to go here. Then, um, after you get the, the sum, is the total number of those credit, credit hours. Uh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Adding up all these points for the courses listed. So that's this part. What you're going to do is you're going to divide the result by the total number of credit hours. You're going to add the number of credit hours. In this case, we have uh, three, six, nine, twelve credit hours. These are all three credit hour courses. And you're going to take that sum and divide by 12, and that will give you your GPA. So that is how the credit hours factor in. So the credit hours first uh, will give you kind of a, a weighted uh, value for the points earned for that course. And then um, when you get all of the points earned for that semester, you divide that by the total number of credit hours. Uh, any other questions on, on this first mini quiz? Okay. All right, so I'm not seeing any other questions. You might still be typing, that's fine. So that's the first mini project quiz. Um, also, as a note, uh, we did finish lecturing on chapter four. Uh, I believe the majority of that homework was due this last weekend. I might be switching, I think, section 4b to be due this coming weekend. Uh, so you, and uh, probably adding a couple of attempts to that homework um, for you guys. And there's a reason for that, which we'll get into for this next one. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions, so we'll go to the next one. So this is the chapter 4a mini project quiz. That should actually be 4a, 4b. Let's take a look. Uh, so you can see there's three questions. There are three questions here. Uh, first question, we're going to actually go through a similar question like this as a, as a class. Uh, and this question is actually going to be one for which, um, yeah, which, which I'm going to extend the homework for. Uh, question two. Uh, question two, let's read through question two real quick. So we have a, retire, a retired couple plans to supplement their retirement income with monthly withdrawals. On um, the interest earned on a retirement account, which has a balance of $200,000. So you have a retirement account with $200,000. Uh, for part A, if the funds earn interest monthly at an APR of 6%, um, which the couple always withdraws from the account, how much is generated in interest each month? So this is going to be kind of a two-step question. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to calculate the amount in the account after um, after one month. So let's let's go to our uh, to a digital paper here, and remind ourselves of the formula and everything that we are looking at. Hang on one second, I don't think I need that. There we go. So if you recall, our formula is A equals P times one plus APR divided by N to the N times Y power. So this is the formula that we're going, that we're using for compound interest. Uh, the principal amount here is given to us. So that is, uh, what was that in, in this example? That was 200,000. And I believe the APR was also given to us. So let's go back to the quiz. Here, what is the APR that we are given for part A? And the APR here 
is 6%, APR of 6%. 6%, exactly, thank you. Very good. Um, and we wanna know how much is generated in interest each month. Uh, and this earns interest monthly, so it's compounded monthly. So we wanna know how much is generated per in, in each month, and it's compounded monthly, because it earns interest monthly. So we go back to our formula here. Our APR was 6%. N is the compounding uh, period, the number of times it is compounded per year. The compounding period is monthly, so it is compounded 12 times per year. And what is Y going to be, the number of years? Well, if we want it to be one month, uh, how much of a year is one month? Well, that's going to be one twelfth of a year. So Y is going to be one twelfth. And I see that in chat, good. Yep, so there is a little bit of delay. So you, you were right. You, um, I do appreciate you guys writing the answers in the chat. Very good. Um, so that's the first part, you're going to be calculating that. Uh, this is going to give you the amount. So this will give you the amount, let's say is a certain a certain amount, I'll just use a, a rectangle to re represent that. So then the interest is going to be the amount minus the principal. So it's going to be whatever you get for the answer minus this 200,000. Okay, and I think we, we saw that a little bit in 4D. Um, in 4D we were using uh, something uh, we were looking at the total payment for a loan and looking at how much of that was interest. So remember the interest is the total minus the principal or the total minus the initial amount. So in this case, it's whatever you get using this formula minus the initial principal, which is 200,000. Okay, so that's part A. And again, I'm not going to go through the problem here because this is supposed to be a, a quiz for you guys. So I'm just kind of setting it up for you, work on it. Uh, B, estimate the annual interest rate needed for this couple to be able to earn uh, 1350 per month. So this we're going to, uh, this we'll, we'll look at uh, as a class in just a moment. Uh, and then question three, is a cash flow uh, problem. So you're given the expense amount, you have to find what is the monthly amount. Uh, so you're looking for the monthly expenses for, for this uh, individual or family. I believe it is uh, a family. Okay. So let's go, let's go back to, go back to our equation here. And there is something I said in class, which I, I was thinking about over the weekend. Um, was, uh, I, want, I want to revise what I said. So when I gave you this formula, I said that you'd only be solving for A, but uh, sometimes I want you to solve for P. So you're either going to solve for A or solve for P. So if you solve for A, you just plug everything in as it is. If you want to solve for P, there's going to be just one extra step. So let's, uh, let me rewrite the uh, formulas. This is as before. And this was also actually in the homework, which is why I want to extend it um, to give you guys a chance to do some of those homework problems. Because um, the more I was thinking about it, the more I would like you guys to be able to solve that. So uh, we're going to look at that. So our equation is A equals P times one plus APR over N to the N times Y power. Now, if we're solving for P, we're going to be given A and we're going to be given uh, the APR, the N and the Y. So we're going to know what this is what this amount is, we're going to know what this amount is. And so what you're going to do is first you're going to solve for this 
amount on the right hand side, we're going to say that is some value. And what you're going to get is you're going to get A equals P times this value, whatever it ends up being. And in order to solve for the principal amount, how much you need to invest, you're going to divide both sides by this, uh, this amount you get on the right hand side. So you're going to get that the principal amount is A divided by this square, where the square represents this one plus APR over N to the N times Y power. And we are going to go over an example for this. So the solving for A, we did that in class. We, we went through a couple of examples for that. Uh, when we want to solve for the principal amount we need to invest, uh, it's going to be kind of a two-step problem. We're going to be using the answer key here um, on your calculator when you get the one plus APR over N, the N times Y, you're going to put that in as, a, as the answer and then the amount that you want divided by uh, the answer. So let's look at it, an example for this. And this is actually uh, showing up in the quiz and will be, and is in the homework, I believe, for 4B, which is, again, I'm going to extend that and add a couple of, of uh, submissions for that. Uh, but question one is kind of um, around this. So suppose you would like to accrue $200,000 in your retirement account exactly 30 years from now by making a single deposit in an account um, that earns interest. And so for part A, uh, the account earns an APR of 5% compounded annually. So you'll notice what we're given here, this is A is 200,000. Uh, y is 30, so that's 30 years. Uh, the APR is 5% and it is compounded annually, so N equals one. So you notice the only thing that you don't know is what is the principal amount invested P? So you're gonna solve for that. And part B is the same setup, except the APR is 4% and it's compounded quarterly, so N is four. But it's, again, you'll, you'll be given everything except for the principal amount. And then I, I believe for part B, Yeah, so for part B is going to be the same. Uh, the annual interest rate needed for this couple to be able to earn $1,350 per month in interest from this $200,000 account. Uh, that I might, I, might, I might drop part B. Okay, but let's go over question one. What, what are we looking at for this one? So. Let's go to our digital paper here. Okay. And I'm going to change the numbers again. This is going to be, this is a, a bit of a quiz. So I want you guys to work out the question I've given you on your own, but we can go over an example. Uh, yes, I will be posting these notes as well as the video. Um, should, should be posted by tonight. All right, so let's go over an example. Let's say that the amount we want is 175,000. Uh, let's say that the year amount is 30 years. Uh, let's say that the APR is 5%. And so uh, we'll do a little bit more with that. And we want this compounded quarterly. Uh, let's, so let's write that compounded quarterly. So what is N going to be? If we're compounding this quarterly, what do we get for N? Four, yep, N is going to be four. And remember for the APR, because uh, remember N is the number of times that we're compounding per year, the number of compounding periods per year. So for compounding quarterly, that's four times a year. Um, so N is four. Uh, here APR is four. 
Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I missed that part of the question. If compounded annually, n would be one. That is correct, yes. Uh, for the APR, we want this in decimal form, so that's 0 0.05. So let's plug everything into our, into our equation. So what we get is 175,000 equals the principal is what we're solving for times one plus the APR is 0 0.05 divided by n is four to the power of four times 30. Okay, so step one, we're going to find what is this expression? And let's go to our calculator. I believe I have one here. Let me also, before, before we go to the calculator, let me just make sure I write this down so I don't have to switch windows. One plus the APR was 0 0.5 for four times 30 power. Okay. All right. So let's go to our calculator. Um, I found an online calculator here so we can go through this. Uh, so do parentheses. We'll have the 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4 parentheses to the power of, so this one has the y to the x, parentheses 4 times 30 parentheses. And we hit equals. And this gives us our 4.4402 and so on. Uh, so I'm just going to say that's 4.44. You should not, should not round. You want to keep this in your calculator. Either save it or use the answer key on the next part. Uh, but for the sake of our notes, I'm going to put that in here. So we have the 175,000 is equal to P times this 4.44. So in order to solve for P, notice we just take the 175,000 divided by what we get. So the principal amount, let's go to our calculator again. We're going to take the 175,000 and divide that by the answer. This one does have an answer key, which is here. Hit equals, and this is the amount that we need to invest. And uh, again, this is a money amount, so we'll round to the nearest cent. So that's $39,412.52. So the principal amount that we need to, that we would need to invest to get $175,000 after these 30 years is $39,412.52. All right, so any questions on, on this question or on this uh, example, on solving for the principal amount? Uh, that's a good question. This, this question, is number one, A and B on the mini quiz. It's similar to one A and B. A and B, they, they uh, switch. Uh, so you take 175,000 divided by the answer, divided by what you get in part and in, in the first part of the, on the right, right hand side without the principle. Um, and for one A and B, the APR changes and the uh, compounding number of changes. So uh, just to give you an idea of, of how changing the APR and the, the compounding amount can change how much you need to invest. Okay. All right, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, I, and now let's, let's switch real quick to uh, Web Campus. Not Web Campus, Pearson. Uh, so let's go to our class here. All right, that took a little bit more time than I had anticipated, but that's all right. We're still doing okay. Um, so mini quiz for uh, 
chapters three and four have been posted. Um, that's going to be due this weekend. And I'm going to extend the homework for 4B to be due this coming weekend. Uh, so you can solve those questions um, looking for the principle. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to go over is StackCrunch. So I'm bringing back Mini Project 5 um, and we're going to go through StackCrunch. So let's go to assignments here. And let's open Mini Project 5, uh, which I did, I did uh, extend this uh, as well. So this should be available now on Pearson. So if we open up the question, this is what it's going to look like. Soon as this loads. Okay. And so for this one, we're going to be using StackCrunch. And uh, the first thing that we want to do. Uh, yes. So the that's a good question. So for chapters three and four. The mini projects are on Web Campus. For mini project five, because it's using StackCrunch, it's on Pearson. And that is, that is confusing. I apologize for that. But that, is, that is the case here. Um, so for this one, we're going to be using StackCrunch to generate 10 random numbers. And they give us a, a fixed value seed. So let's uh, minimize that, go back to here. So StackCrunch, if you look here on the left-hand side, is right here underneath chapter contents. If you look down, there's assignments, gradebook, e-text, chapter, con uh, chapter contents, and then stack crunch. So we'll click on stack crunch. I guess it's going to ask, uh, ask us to leave that page. That's fine. We'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, so you're going to click on this first part, the visit the StackCrunch website. So click on that first link. And uh, maybe this is not going to be working for us today. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, this is giving us some issues. Maybe we will have chapter five. Maybe we won't have that due today. I'm going to have to take a look at this and see what it's doing. So, uh, actually, let's. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, I'll I'll see if I can figure that out today. If I can, I will post a video on how to do the stack crunch. Um, apologies, that was working earlier. I don't know what it is doing right now. It, is included should be included with the with the Pearson account, but it it doesn't seem to be working currently. So we'll come back to that. Um, okay, so I will let you know tonight uh, whether I can get the stack crunch to work or not. Um, if not, we might have to work on the mini project five later. Uh, so let's. Let's just, for now, we'll just focus on the two. I'll let you know tonight whether we're doing chapter five. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Uh, okay, so apologies for that again. I, it was working before. I don't know what, what, it's, what it's doing right now. Um, okay, so we went over those, those mini projects and I went over the, uh, how to find the, the principal amount if you're given uh, the amount A and the APR, the compounding period, and the number of years you want to invest. How do you find the principal amount? Uh, and we went over an example of that because uh, that is in the mini project quiz for chapter four. Uh, the rest of the time now, unless there are any last minute questions, is going to be for you guys to work on your uh, group projects. Uh, unless, again, uh, if you wanted to work on it on your own, that's fine. Um, just as a quick reminder, if you haven't already, um, please email me, letting me know you want to work alone so that I can get things organized. I'm going to, I'm going to be deleting the uh, preset groups and just recreate those uh, for the sake of 
organization. So it's going to have um, your, so it will be your previous groups that you had last uh, project, unless you want to work on this alone, in which case you'll be in a group on your own. And again, that's just for organization purposes, so I can have that um, uh, organized on web campus for, for easier creating. Um, but are there any last minute questions before I let you guys go to work on your projects? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, the project is due, uh, is going to be due Sunday, November 1st. So uh, that is two weeks out. Any other questions? Okay, um, so I'll let, go ahead and let you guys go and meet however you have chosen to meet uh, on your groups. I am going to be here in the Zoom meeting in case you have any questions. Let me. Uh, let me stop the recording here since we're not going over any other material.